That was the best playoff race I've ever seen in my life. Dead serious. Hey there, race fans. It's Race Day Top 5 with me, Frank Five. Homestead Miami Speedway, the mile and a half track, provides a lot of entertaining racing from running up towards the wall to running down the bottom. And yesterday we witnessed perhaps the greatest playoff race ever at this track, where a lot of our playoff contenders ran up front all day long, battling out for the win. But at the end of the day, only one could come out on top. And one driver did, driving for a team owned by a very famous athlete. Let's get into all that went down in Homestead Miami yesterday. Number one. Redick punches his ticket to Phoenix. Tyler Redick won yesterday's Straight Talk Wireless 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway by performing a last lap pass on the outside through turns three and four to pass Ryan Blaney to win the race and punch his ticket to the championship four, beating out the 12 of Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, and Chase Elliott for the victory. What a big Big moment for Tyler Reddick in this 45 team. This is 2311 Racing, a team owned by Denny Hamlin, one of Reddick's competitors, and Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players ever. There's a reason why they call him the GOAT, though. But yesterday, Reddick got the job done with his owner at the track, witnessing history, as for the first time ever, 2311 Racing is going to the championship four and competing for a title. And it is a big boost as well for Tyler Reddick. If you look what's happened to him the last two races with the close call of nearly getting eliminated at the Roval due to making contact with cars, damaging the rear of the car, but then working his way up back to the field to finish 11th and make it into the round of eight. Then you have last week, he won the opening stage, but to kick off stage number two, he gets involved in a wreck on the front stretch and has him flipping upside down and pretty much putting him in a must-win situation entering this weekend at Homestead. But yesterday, he was able to get the job done. Started on the pole, had a great car early on in the race, led a lot of laps, then kind of faded for a while and hung around fourth to fifth place for the most part. But when it came time to make things happen in the final stage, Reddick made it happen when he was able to extend his stint on a long green flag run while green flag pit stops were happening with under 50 laps to go. Reddick was able to extend the stint for as long as he could and then he had to come down pit road and change four tires and fuel, which looked like it was going to be game over for him. But a couple laps after that happened, one of our playoff contenders and Kyle Larson went for a spin in turn number four while racing for the lead against the 12. And that brought Reddick back in the game where he elected to stay out on just a couple laps older tires while everybody else pitted for their fresh set of tires so they could have a mad dash to the finish. I felt like Reddick was possibly going to be shuffled out on that restart, but he hung up there in the top three racing against Hamlin and Blaney. It looked like he was going to see his driver owner win the race. And then when they took the white flag, Reddick made a pass to the inside and off of turn number two, he completed the pass ahead of Denny Hamlin and got a nice draft from behind from the 11 car and was able to carry the momentum into turn number three where he rode it on the high side up against the wall where he ran pretty much the entire race and was able to execute the pass off of turn four to beat the 12 car and get to the start finish line to punch his ticket to the championship for Phoenix. That was a perfect move. An A-plus performance on that last lap by the 45 team and Tyler Reddick. They've been one of the best cars this season, winning all these races, winning the regular season championship. But there were times during these playoffs where we felt like the regular season champion could possibly be eliminated because they didn't run well in the round of one, even though they were round of 16, even though they were able to advance to the round of 12. Then they were nearly eliminated, as I mentioned, at the Roval, but they did not go down without a fight and were able to advance after making a nice comeback through the field. And then you have what happened to him last week. You felt like it's a must win, and who knows if he was going to come out on top of a track where he, Kyle Larson, and Chris Rubel used their dirt racing experience to the perfection at this track. But yesterday, Reddick was able to get the job done and punch his ticket. What a call by his crew chief, Billy Scott, by the way, to extend the stand on that last long green flag run before bringing him down pit road, and then a couple laps later, the caution coming out and benefiting the 45 team. And that was allowed them to get them back in the game and get to victory lane and get 2311 Racing into the championship four with a shot at a title. And it was a very special moment for Reddick to, you know, celebrate with the boss man and MJ, all of his crew members, Billy Scott with the call, and his son Bo coming up 
post race to hug him, screaming "Daddy!" It was so adorable and very well deserving for Tyler Reddick. He's again been one of the most dominant drivers this year. He deserves to be in the championship four, and that's where he'll be. So he doesn't have to worry about anything this upcoming race and let everybody else try to fight it out for those last two spots. All he's got to focus now on is Phoenix. So a big congrats to Tyler Reddick and the 45 team. An impressive win yesterday. Number two. Heartbreak for Blaney. Ryan Blaney comes up one spot shy of locking himself into the championship for back-to-back years with a chance of defending his title. But you cannot blame him for trying. Ryan Blaney ran great yesterday up in the top five. Well, first of all, he started in the top 20, and I felt like he was going to have a long way to go to get up to the front. And Blaney at times has been hit or miss at this track, but the recent years, Blaney's actually been fairly competitive at Homestead. And yesterday, he, that charge of the field to get up inside the top five, boy, that 12 car was very, very strong. It looked like a lot of times during the race, it was going to be second fiddle to whoever was leading or maybe third place. But when he was able to be out in front leading a lot of those laps, the 12 car was very, very strong. The, a couple laps into the run, he would fade. And then after a quick pit stop, he would vault himself back up a few spots, especially when pit stops cycled through. Then he would fade a little bit later. But there was definitely speed in that car. The last long green flag run that we had, it looked like it was going to be Blaney battling Kyle Larson for the victory. But unfortunately, with that incident in turn three and four with the five spinning, the 12 car was pretty much, you know, a sit and duck at the time because he knew that it would bring everybody back up to her. And it came down pit road, got that nice pit stop, and were able to get out there and were in position. And then coming to the white flag, Blaney was side by side with the 11 at Denny Hamlin down the back straightaway, heading into turn three. And he was able to complete the pass through turn four, coming to the start finish line to take the white. And it looked like, again, victory was in sight for Ryan Blaney to make it to the championship four. But that strong run by Reddick through one and two, passing his teammate, getting that nice draft down the back stretch, carrying it off into turn three, and passing by the 12 off of turn four. You just couldn't help but feel for the 12 team. They put so much effort, so much work after they were caught up in multiple problems last week as well as Las Vegas with the incident with the tow link, running over debris, being part of that big wreck. It was just a rough go for the 12 team last week. And yesterday, it just felt like, you know, the way to rip off the band-aid from last week and let it heal. This would be a nice healing process. Unfortunately, the band-aid is on there. It still stings to see Blaney come up just short of making it to the championship four. Don't say that he's completely out of it yet. He still has one more opportunity, but it is a must-win for the 12 team. Being 38 points below the cutoff line, he has to go to Martinsville next week and win. And obviously, this poster's interview, he was completely bummed that he was not able to get to that start-finish line in first place and lock up his championship four spot. But, again, you cannot deny the effort that he put to try to get there and try to win that race yesterday. But we saw what he did last year, where he won in Martinsville in a must-win situation. And, of course, we all know what happened the following week. He won the championship. So, is it possible for Ryan Blaine to repeat the same storyline as last year? Absolutely. Never count this 12 team, and he's been very good at Martinsville in the past. But he'll have his hands full of a lot of those other drivers that he's racing against to try to make the championship for because they all are very good at Martinsville, and all of them are former winners. So, Blaney's got his work cut out for him, and it was a definite heartbreak yesterday. So, all that's left to do for the 12 team now, go in, and he has a chance at the championship four once again. Number three, strong contenders fall short at the very end of the race. A lot of our the playoff drivers included guys like Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, and Chase Elliott running up front all day long, but just falling short at the very end of the race. Starting off with the 11 at Denny Hamlin, where he was running up in the top five, top 10 for the majority of the race, didn't really showcase the speed until the end of stage two because he pitted a little bit later than a lot of other guys did and allowed him to use those fresh tires to his advantage and charge his way up through the field where he was able to take stage number two. In the final stage, he was just kind of hovering around for the most part. First of all, the pit crew wasn't really, you know, on par yesterday as far as executing solid stops and getting Hamlin much needed track position off of pit road it would take his efforts on the racetrack as well as those long green flag runs especially pitting late to work to his advantage which it did help him and that last long green flag run Hamlin was one of the other cars that pitted late he pitted way before the 45 car eventually came down pit road and Hamlin was using those fresh tires to try to fly through the field and catch up to the front two knowing that Reddick would eventually pit and he would find himself in third spot maybe chasing down Ryan Blaney and Kyle Larson. Well, then that caution came out. He came down pit row, and that last pit stop was actually a great pit stop that got the 11 car up there at the front contending for the win. 
he was able to take the lead through turns one and two passing his driver on the outside and it looked like victory was with Denny Hamlin and the last few corners until coming off of turn number four to the white flag where Ryan Blaney who had a big run off of turn two the lap prior, got a nice run, stayed side by side, and then got by the 11 car off of turn four, taking the white flag. And then the 45 passing him off of turn two in the last lap added insult to injury. Although his draft, you could say, he helped his driver get to the championship four, although you could tell Denny Hamlin really wanted that win because he hadn't been in the championship four since 2021. And again, it's been a trend the last two years. Hamlin has had the chance to make it to the final four, but... When the moment comes, he tends to fall apart. So, could he change the narrative next week? He kind of needs to win, but he can also still point his way in. We shall see, but kind of a missed opportunity for the 11 car yesterday. Then we have Christopher Bell. Of course, this track, known for being very successful for him in his cup career, ran well here a year ago, even though we didn't get the victory. He was still very, very strong. Actually, I think he did win last year. And he made it to the championship four. Well, he's got his work cut out for him, you know, just trying to stay above the cutoff line. He had a really good car yesterday. He ran up at the front, led a couple laps, wasn't dominant like I thought he would be, but still put up a great performance nonetheless. I think the last long run kind of really hurt his car. And in that last restart, he just couldn't get any forward momentum going. So a little bit short for Christopher Bell, but they enter with a 20 plus point cushion entering Martinsville next week. So as long as they have a good run, get all the stage points and nobody behind him out points him. And in case we get a new winner, he should be good to make it to the final four. And then Chase Elliott. Wow. Who saw that coming? What an absolute strong car the nine car had yesterday. His best performance by far this track since 2020, where he fell short of victory that night to Denny Hamlin. Yesterday, Elliott qualified in seventh spot after, you know, having a pretty subpar practice session. He qualified well. And in the first lap of the race, he was able to dodge a spin up in front of him in turn three. And after that, he started charging further and further to the front, racing against Blaney, Reddick, Hamlin, and Bell all day long, and the five-car Kyle Larson. Elliott had great speed in that car. Long run speed definitely helped him. He was able to even get the lead after the first cycle of green flag pit stops. But then the caution came out towards the latter part of the first stage, and they came down pit road, and he was not able to get the save win because other guys stayed down and kind of hindered his progress on the restart. And stage two looked to be, you know, Elliott's stage. He was just the best car by far until Hamlin charged late and was able to take the stage win from him. Again, Elliott coming off the wreck last week at... Las Vegas is in a must-win situation as well. It looked like the, the chance for them to win yesterday was in, within reach. But I think on that last long green flag run, they kind of lost the handling of the car and couldn't keep up with the track as well as the 12, the 45, the 5, and even the 11 car did. And even though they had great pit stops all day long, the last pit stop was still solid, but they just weren't able to generate any forward momentum, especially in that last restart, to try to take the lead and get up at the front of the field. So at the end of the day, it's a fifth place for Chase Elliott, a great result. But, unfortunately, not victory lane. And, again, deal with a must-win next weekend at Martinsville. But, he's also done this before in 2020, where he needed to win Martinsville to make it to the Final Four, which he did, and he won the championship that year. So, is it possible for Chase Elliott to replicate the same thing that happened to him in 2020? Absolutely. But you feel like yesterday, again, was a missed opportunity for this team. So, great runs by a lot of these playoff drivers yesterday, but just fell short. Number four, Larson and Byron, okay days. Two of our other playoff drivers, William Byron and Kyle Larson, the other two out of the three Hendrick cars remaining in the playoffs, kind of had up and down days for the most part. Kicking it off with William Byron with a sixth place finish, still pretty solid, but was nowhere really near the likes of the guys that we saw at the finish of the race and even the majority of the race. He was pretty much the sixth best car out of the playoff group all race long not really able to generate any progress as far as the long runs go but he still put up a solid performance finishing inside the top 10 the problem with that is he's only seven points above the cutoff line entering next weekend because of the Tyler Reddick win so Byron's gonna have to work hard and try to hope that nobody knew wins next week and that he can outpoint his teammate behind him to make it to the championship four thankfully the last time we were at Martinsville in the spring William Byron was the one that was victorious and then you have Kyle Larson, the guy that I predicted and I thought was going to win the race yesterday, lock up his championship four spot. 
Unfortunately, things didn't work out his way. They had a really good car at the beginning of the race, but then after green flag pit stops in stage one, he scrubbed the wall off at turn two. It had to come down pit road, and of course, debris fell from the right rear tire after contact. He came down pit road, changed tires, and just had to fight his way back up to the field, especially with a little bit of diffuser damage and being unhappy with the contact and like you know these cars when you make contact and you run on the rim, it really sucks. Kind of does. But Larson was able to fight his way back up to the field. And by the time he got to the final stage, he got inside the top five and was challenging Ryan Blaney for the lead with 13 laps to go through turn three until while trying to pass the three car of Austin Hill on the outside, they made contact with the 12 and the five and the five got loose and started going around, spinning out and bringing out the yellow flag. And they had a rough pit stop, even though they were able to slow down and kind of maintain speed. They did not have a good final pit stop. And at the end of the day, Larson finished in 13th spot with no stage points acquired and now seven below. So he's going to have to go to Martinsville next week and either outpoint the 24 of William Byron and hope that nobody knew wins or just simply go win the race. But kind of missed opportunities as well for the 24 and the five teams. Solid days, but unfortunately not the finishes they, they were hoping for. And number five, the racing yesterday, absolutely amazing. From the start to finish, the racing was perfect at Homestead Miami Speedway. Great battles all day long, side-by-side -side racing, running up towards the wall, the tire fall, differing strategies. All the playoff drivers up there battling for the win, knowing a win would lock themselves into the Final Four, was outstanding. The only playoff driver we never talked about yesterday that much was Joy Logano because he had already won Las Vegas and he was never a factor all day but it didn't really need to matter what mattered was we had the playoff drivers that were battling for the win to try to lock up their spot in the championship four yesterday and a lot of them were up there again five six guys battling it out all day yesterday it was absolutely phenomenal racing and this just goes to show that Homestead should remain a staple in the playoffs and should be considered to go back to possibly be being the championship four event down the road. There are actually already some talks going on about possibility of Homestead being the championship four race, not next year because it's still Phoenix, but perhaps in 2026. And I think a lot of us would feel pretty good to have it back. I mean, Phoenix has had its good moments as the championship four race, but it's kind of fallen a little bit off uh, the last couple of years. I mean, the first two years, the championship four battle at, you know, in 2020 and 2021 was pretty fun. The last two years been kind of... Mm, not really enjoyable, but I still feel like that maybe this Phoenix race this weekend and maybe next year should pr maybe provide a lot of excitement, but Homestead is where it's at, folks. That is one of the ultimate races you want to go to, especially in the playoffs, and if this race becomes the championship four event down the road, this race yesterday will show you just why it belongs there, but great racing all day yesterday. Now it comes down to one race to make it to the championship four. Next weekend at Martinsville Speedway, the paperclip baby. We already know that Joey Logano and Tyler Reddick are locked into the championship four with their wins at Las Vegas and at Homestead Miami Speedway. The two drivers that are currently above the cutoff line right now, Christopher Bell ahead by 20 plus points and William Byron is ahead by seven points. Behind the grid, Kyle Larson is below by 7 points, Denny Hamlin below by 18 points, Ryan Blaney and Chase Daly both 38 and 43 points below the cutoff line. When you look at those last 6 drivers, Elliott and Blaney are the two drivers that I think a lot of us could agree on, they must win. But the same goes for those 4 guys that are kind of in a battle that could still make it in on points, but they love to win as well and lock up their spot. So what will happen next week? Who will come out on top? Who will find themselves in the championship 4 heading into Phoenix? And who will be left on the outside wondering, man, we nearly made it to Phoenix to battle for title, but fell short. We'll see what happens next week. And I'm excited for it because I'm going to be there next weekend. My second time in Martinsville. I'm so excited. I enjoyed last year's race. And I feel like this year will be very entertaining as well to see who makes it to the championship four. And I can't wait to be there and see what goes down next Sunday. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Subscribe, like, and congrats once again to Tyler Reddick and the 45 team on their impressive win at home sales today. And they are going to the championship four. Have a great week, everybody. Let's go racing.